Julia, can you tell us from the beginning how this started? Uh, tell us what happened yes. all the way to the beginning from end. Yes, yeah, so I worked in the shipping office and um, I also greeted the people and everything else. So um, I was not part of the construction crew outside. So I always was in the office and did emails and answer the phones and took care of um, products and things like that to ship out. And uh, Dr. Hoven came into the office and he said, hey, Julie, um, I want to let you know everybody here at camp is freaking out. I have a friend, Chris Jones. Um, he was charged being a sex offender. Um, he's been in prison for it. Um, he is one of my good longtime friends. Uh, he is coming here to Dinosaur Adventureland today. I just want to let you know that he is coming. People outside of the people outside, because I was in the office, I didn't know the commotion going on outside. Everybody at camp was panicking about a sex offender coming to Dinosaur Adventureland where we allow children to go to. Little bit of a strange problem, don't you think? So, anyway, I said, okay, Dr. Hoven, no problem, whatever. So, Dr. Hoven leaves. Um, I see a black SUV pull down the driveway and I go out to greet the car because that's what I do. I greet everybody and I have them sign the waiver form and things like that. Anyway, he comes out of the car and he, I said, hi, my name is Julie. Thank you for coming to Dinosaur Adventure Land. And he's like, hi, my name is Chris Jones. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, here we go. But first, before that happened though, before he came down the car, I want to mention this. I, when Dr. Rogan left the office, I went outside to kind of mingle with everybody and see what the commotion was all about that Dr. Rogan was saying to me. And I'm backtracking a little bit because I, I want to mention this. Mark Stoney took his daughter and left. He was gone. Uh, there was another family there with the children of four or five, Jonathan's family. Uh, Jonathan's family, he took his wife and kids, left the property completely. He was gone. Um, I went up to Freddie to uh, see him in the kitchen and he... Uh, had all of his, his children go into the cabins and he wouldn't let the kids out because of this guy coming. So people who are there on the property with children, they really were freaking out and getting off, off property and putting their kids in cabins. They didn't want their kids outside. This black car is coming down. I go to approach the car. He comes out. His name is, he said, hi, my name is Chris Jones. And I'm like, oh, okay. I said, how are you? So I brought him into the office and I see this little black boy coming out around from the passenger seat. So I bring Chris Jones into the office. I have him sign the waiver form. Dr. Hoven comes down. Um, he says, hey, brother, how are you doing? Let's go on a tour. Because Dr. Hoven gives everybody's tours, and that's what he does. So um, the day goes on. Later on at nighttime, it's about 5 o'clock. Uh, we always eat dinner at 5. We go up to eat dinner. Um, hardly anybody's there. Because, again, everybody's still off campus because this guy is here, the sex offender. So I uh, waited a little bit till people left the cafeteria area so I can talk to Chris Jones myself because I wanted to get to know him and know his story. So I walked up to Chris Jones and I said, hi, um, what's going on? I hear things saying said about you that you're some sex offender. Something happened. He said, oh, yeah. Um, Paul Hansen uh, came onto the property and he was freaking out. He was going around concerned about what he saw with this boy. Now, Paul Hansen, when I was there at that house with my husband, Paul Hansen was also there on the property, but he had his own uh, motor home that he parked in front of the house and Paul can use the bathroom in the shower and stuff. So we always let the door unlocked and open. Paul can always come in, use the bathroom, use the shower in the house. We never mind that. That's fine with Paul. We know Paul. Um, so anyway, that's how Paul saw the boy and Chris Jones sleeping together because he would go inside, use the restroom and everything's open in the house, doors are open, whatever. So anyway, Paul comes onto the property and he's going around to everybody. Even Paul came to me in the office and went around to everybody else at camp concerned about what he saw. And he even told Dr. Hogan, I'm concerned about this. This isn't good, uh, Doc. This isn't a good look for you. This is bad. And Dr. Hogan always goes, oh, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. I got it handled. Specify what he saw. Um, yeah, and let, let me interject here real quick. I, I mentioned that I was the first person that Paul spoke to about this. I've got his the text message that we had on November 24th, 2019. I asked, where is Chris staying? 
Paul answered with me, Paul Hansen. He is 100% 100 present, okay, and is 100% innocent. I have his full case. It is an unabashed travesty, what a low-life prosecutor and a corrupt judge can do to the unaware. Um, And then I, I... I replied and gave him my concerns about, you know, Chris's presence with all the kids there. You know, it's, it's a problem for us, not just, not just Zaire or Chris being there in general, but for the families. And, uh, okay, great. So I wanted you guys to see the whole scenario, how this all played out, because at first you hear in this video that Mark Stoney left with his kids when he found out that Chris was coming. Okay. I get that. That's fine, and other everybody was warned and alerted, and they some people left with their kids. Fine. But in my mind, I was thinking, well, did Mark Stoney know that the pedophile was actually bringing a young boy with him? So in the beginning, it sounds like, well, maybe he didn't know that the pedophile was actually coming with a child. But as you just heard right here in this clip, that Mark Stoney knew... Because he was getting texts from the other guy there. He even mentions the kid's name, Zaire. Mark Stoney knew that after he left, Chris, or the pedophile guy, came there with the child. And was intending on spending the night there with the child. Mark Stoney knew this information before it happened. Does everybody understand that? Mark Stoney did not do anything to stop it. He simply sat there with his children that were safe and didn't call the cops. He didn't go there and grab the kid and do anything or knock somebody out. He didn't do any of that. That's all Mark Stoney did. Do you know that that's actually against the law? That if you know that a crime is being committed, which a convicted pedophile running around with the kid is actually a crime, but do you know that that is against the law? To know that something like that is going down and not tell the police. So Mark Stoney, technically, if they wanted to throw the book at him, he broke the law. So I wanted to show everybody because there's always two sides. There's always more to the story than what one side is telling. Is Kent bad? Yeah, Kent's way off in his judgments and he's probably, you know, mistreated people. I'm not doubting any of that. But Mark Stoney... I want everybody to see that he's a coward. He's a pedophile enabler and he's a coward. Does I want everybody to realize that he had an opportunity to stop this. He knew about it before it happened. He was there and he didn't do anything besides talk to some guy through text, through texts. That's it. He had the opportunity. Now he sits home all day making videos about Kent. That's all he does. It's too late, Mark Stoney. The kid was violated. You didn't do anything. And it's too late. The the damage is done, man. So, you know, maybe Kent will get punished and maybe he won't. But the worst is already done. You can't go back and change it, whether Kent gets punished or not. So you sit around all day and make videos about Kent. Why don't you make videos about yourself? Show people how much of a coward you were. You didn't do anything. You had the nerve to protect your own kids. But what about that other kid that you knew was there? You knew, and you didn't do anything. I want everybody to see what a coward Mark Stoney is, and that these people don't say the full story. Actually, if he did say the full story, he'd be incriminating himself, because he did something that's technically against the law. Which is not alerting police that that was going on, that there was a crime being committed. That crime would be a pedophile actually, you know, being in close proximity with lots of kids, and that one kid in particular. So Mark Stoney knew this law was being broken. He did not say anything. Therefore, he is enabling that to happen. He's letting it happen, and he is breaking the law. But, you know, like I said, he wouldn't say that because he'd be incriminating himself. And then I, I, I replied and gave him my concerns about, you know, Chris's presence with all the kids there. You know, it's, it's a problem for us, not just, not just Zaire or Chris being there in general, but for the families. It's, it's a problem for us, not just... Not just Zaire or Chris being there in general, but for the families. Not just Zaire or Chris being there in general, but for the families. Not just Zaire or Chris being there in general, but for the families. Mark Stoney knew that the pedophile was there with the boy, the young boy that he brought. 
the day that he got there. And he did nothing. Mark Stoney is a pedophile, an abler, and a coward, and a hypocrite. 